So uh, let's be rejoined by, by Maria Louise Menke. So, <laughs> Maria Louise, this is your first film, it's your debut, debut film as an actress, right? Yes. So, let's talk about the project. You're also credited as a screenwriter on the film um, with Matisse, the director. Um, and I'm curious to know, did Matisse choose you first as an actor or as his writer? Uh, as, as an actress, yeah. Um, we've known each other for some years. Um, we were kind of in the same friends group um, around 2015. We were uh, creating this um, internet magazine on theater and cinema that would be ra run by um, youngsters. And um, he studied in New York uh, film, film directing. And once he got back, he got into this rave scene and started to think about this kind of movie. And then he thought that uh, I could uh, be the girl. And um, He just saw that in you. Well, she was first um, thought of as... Um, like pretty much the same person as I am, but then when we started to work on it, um, um, I said that I, I could try to actually build a character, uh, I, I would like to try that, and she became what she is now. But uh, yeah, I had so many comments on the first draft that I told Matisse, you know, maybe it's easier to not explain everything, but just show you. Because actually, um, my main occupation, if you could say that, is I'm a poet. So writing with, uh, working with text is um, kind of in my comfort zone. So that's how the process of writing together came about? Or, yeah. or was it just you uh, giving suggestions on your character only? No, 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 we started to build the the whole narrative, kind of um, rebuild it. But they, of course, I mean, it's still mainly his um, his idea, his, his story. story. Yeah, yeah but um, uh, I got the chance to work on that as well. Yeah, and let us talk about the story. So this is a girl trying to assert herself, her newly found identity, while also acting as a surrogate mother for her little brother. Um, how did you find the character? Which part of it? <laughs> well, you tell me. So. Um, so you sort of had to be the ma the absent mother for for your brother kid. Um, so was that always part of the original idea from Matisse, or do you have a strong input in it? Well, I don't remember that uh, precisely. Uh, um, those things. Um, it was. Uh, kind of a very live process, uh, moving towards something, then stepping back. And also, we did a bunch of interviews with people um, that were connected to one or another theme in the movie, because it was very important for us to create it as honest as possible. And many of the things that we wanted to um, show there was not actually in our uh, personal experience. So, um, well, I'm credited as a co-writer because I got to sit by the computer as well, but it was actually uh, a lot of people's stories and the rest of the actors um, were quite um, involved in that as well. Yeah, and I quite enjoyed that confrontation with 
your father in the film. So it's like you were acting as the parent and he was acting as the child. So that is, that, is, that, is that a fair assessment? Is that what you were trying to do? Um, no, I mean, line I was trying to just uh, find some real connection there, with whatever it takes, I guess. Okay, so let's talk about the subculture, uh, Riga's EDM party scene. So tell me, is it somehow a rite of passage for all young people there? to go through that kind of experience. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, it's not, no. Uh, I, I didn't even go through that experience myself. Um, it was very close to me, but I was kind of always afraid of doing drugs, so I uh, couldn't get quite in there. Uh, but um, yeah, it's hard to tell now, after the pandemic, um, how are those things, but before, uh, I believe, electronic music scene was uh, quite colorful and interesting, and uh, I've, it's been important to me as well, before, as a teenager, um, just uh, as, as a sort of uh, med meditative uh, experience, the deep listening and um, getting into that rhythm and just following it with movement. I think that it's um, those events are good quality. And it's not just the drug taking. It's what, there's also a very disturbing rape scene in the film, <clears throat> and then. Talking about the visual style, the, the film really takes you by the hand and immerses you in that culture. Um, you had to endure long, long takes. So was that something very taxing on you? Well, it was complicated. It was a lot of pressure because uh, throughout the scene, because we were going from one room to another, there were actually constantly these guys, just a, a group of people running, uh, following you with with sound and light and, and so on and so on. At specific points, so very and, yeah, logistically, yeah, yeah. must have been a nightmare. And whenever there went a cut, I was hoping it's not because of me, because all these people are... It, it was uh, very, in a way, choreographed um, and um, precise that moving around, and I admire um, the mm, cameraman, I don't know, I, I don't speak English in my everyday life, uh, I feel for you. Speak brilliant. <laughs> you speak brilliantly, you speak brilliantly. Thank um, you, um, but yeah, because he had to, um, it was a very um, constant dialogue there with him, and he was running with us, he bought sneakers on purpose for this uh, this um, and we were joking around like uh, sound um, camera Sasha's shoes okay we can roll <laughs> like, um, yeah, yeah and let's talk about you your very earnest performance in the film you're quite vulnerable and strong at the same time um, it's weird to hear very all these things. very very credible all the way through. Uh, so, do you have to research the LGBTQ plus culture, or did you s simply tap into your own feelings to create this bond with Gunda in the film? It was very interesting. Um, I definitely did um, try to get as a broad view as possible, but also um really trying to explore what what is sexuality and um and what it could be and how is that different for different people and but the, in the end you know you have all this information but you have to put it somewhere in the background and just do the thing 
and tell us about the LGBTQ plus uh, culture in, uh, in your country. How are people treated in Latvia in 2022? Is it still like a taboo or at least publicly? I guess it is because nobody is asking me anything about it when we're talking about the movie. <laughs> Like, um, no, I, I don't know, uh, but I've noticed that we're kind of uh, moving where, where around going, yeah. the question uh, there. But um, but at the same time, I understand that um, kind of in the story, it's it's not brought up as a very big deal in a way. I think for Lion, it is not. Oh, I like girls. What now? Yeah, that's the good thing about this film that it really is treating the subject like any anything else but yeah i mean uh, overall um living in a post-soviet country um oftentimes means um, um having to deal with quite um um i don't know with with criticism on whatever is strange about you and uh, uh, um, but the, those things are quite um, quite quickly changing in the past years as I, I suppose the atmosphere has gone overall um, in a in my humble opinion better direction there um, so the film shows a very enticing and magical nightlife in Riga, um, so, such beautiful colors and neon lights, um, is, is it something that is the reality or is it just a dream, Matisse's dream of Riga at night time? Um, during the filming it was a total dream because it was shot during the pandemic and nothing uh, could happen the, uh, at that time. And actually, uh, the people we got uh, to come for the like, ma mass shooting... That's okay. Um, <laughs> sounds bad. Um, okay. Cut. Um, again. Well, um, for, uh, for those parties, party scenes, um, they were very happy because they couldn't go to any parties because it was illegal to have them. But it was legal to to do a party if it's for the filming. So during that time it was really creating this I imaginary space. But um, is it that much neon lights? I, I haven't paid my attention to that. But um, I mean, there are, well, actually all those parties are inspired in one way or another by uh, actual events that have happened. Um, and, um, but uh, we had to, of course, have, um, take these Kinematographical ba -da 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 decisions. <laughs> we, of course, chose uh, the kind of parties that are not in a black small box, um, but in a big circus. Or, yeah, but we have also boring-looking parties in Riga. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you heard it here first. Um, and now, how was it working with the other actors? Splendid. <laughs> did, did you actually bond with the little brother in the film? Oh, yeah. And it was pretty um, also uh, challenging because he was so fun and cute. Uh, but Lionel is always in this depressed mood. And um, between the takes, I had to really try to n not get too much into that relationship and not, not get overly happy because of it. Um, yeah, yeah, it, uh, it, it was nice. 
Um, also, um, Magnolia Pictures International has picked up distribution right, rights worldwide, but the film has not been released in Latvia yet. Is that right? It's not right. It's, it's very, not right. Yeah. When when was it released? Um, on the fourteenth of October. Okay, so just recently. recently. And how was the reaction from the local audiences? I've had so many conversations about it. Um, it uh, depends on... Uh, but uh, overall, very positive. Uh, there are many comments on that. Oh, finally, a movie that feels natural, um, that, that is important for many people. And uh, for many young people, I, I assume, pe people will be able to see themselves on the screen. But also, I mean... Speaks to a younger generation, right? Well, I really hope it does. Because it is the main um, aim um, to, to um, give, the, give, give those kids uh, something they can relate to and maybe skip uh, unnecessary bad experiences as well. Okay, so before opening this up to the audience, can I ask you, are you going to stick around as an actress or are you going back to your day job? My day job as a poet? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, nine to five. <laughs> Which one do you prefer? It, it, it doesn't work like that. Um, well, I, I do all kinds of stuff in arts and culture. You're very creative, I can tell. Okay, brilliant. Uh, the right time now to, for the public to ask questions. We've got a roving mic, so if you don't mind waiting a second. I was wondering uh, how much of what we see on the screen was a result of an improvisation? Because, for example, there was a scene where the character of Adam hit his head and it seemed very natural. I, I was thinking, um, was everything scripted or did you allow some improvisation there? Thank you. It did happen at times, but you know, first it's improvisation, everybody loves it and you have to repeat it five times, so it's not improvisation uh, anymore afterwards. I think that he did hit his head. Uh, I, also, my nose actually bled. It was uh, a, a real thing. I got sick, of, uh, like a slight um, flu during the filming, and I had to constantly like blow my nose and also uh, snorting that coconut milk powder probably didn't help. Um, so uh, we were shooting and uh, because I was a little sick, we um, agreed that we will do that uh, scene only twice and we did it once and then again and I see uh, the girl's uh, Greta's face go a bit confused like, what, what's happening, your nose is bleeding and I realized that well we can't really do this again um, it's, it's not safe so let's just continue on. Perfect for your character. And also, um, during that running away from that uh, asshole scene, uh, in that um, crossroad, Masha almost get, gets hit by a car. So once it happened um, as an improvisation, um, it, it wasn't... Um, there was an actual car and that actually almost happened and uh, then we had the producer do it <laughs> on purpose in the next take. Any other questions? No? Should we wrap this up? Oh, one here at the front. But I mean also dialogue-wise there was always some space left there um, no, it wasn't like text we had to do. 
Um, I guess my question would be more directed towards the writing and considering you're the hand that I thought would be perfect to ask you. Um, I saw a lot of similarities between this film and like the early works of like Celine Sciamma in terms of like coming of age, uh, especially around sort of the question of sexuality, especially in um, uh, in the female body and stuff like that. I just wanted to know if like she had any sort of influence on the way, also in the way it was shot with the long takes and everything. There was a lot that I thought reminded me of stuff like Tomboy, Water Lilies and Girlhood. And I was just wondering if you guys ever took her as like a mood board or any part of inspiration. I see what you're saying, but I think that no, uh, there were many movies that were on that mood board, but um, uh, actually, I don't think so. It's, uh, yeah. But um, I mean, I, I that may might be a question for another person. For Matisse, probably. Um, now, Matisse is also the producer of tomorrow's film, Sisters. Which is amazing. Which is a great film. Uh, we preview that at 2 o'clock tomorrow. And we have a, a closing night film as well after that in the afternoon. So two more films. And then we'll wrap up this second edition of the London Baltic Film Festival. So if you don't have your tickets, now is the moment to buy them and support the festival. But uh, for now, shall we say thanks to Maria Luise?